This breakout technique is becoming just a little old now, but it is a very good learning project for anyone into Photoshop's layers. I was out trying to shoot ospreys in flight at a local headland, but this is the only bird that showed up. Let's begin the process with the two original images in Photoshop's bridge. I need to open up both of these images into Photoshop as a layered stack. I may as well do that from within Bridge by holding the control key and selecting both of the thumbnails. From the top left of the screen we're going to go to Tools, Photoshop and Load Files into Photoshop Layers. Now with our two layers in place here Let's turn off the aircraft just for a moment and select the sky layer. I'd like to concentrate first on creating the border, the background to the image, and the thin line that the aircraft is going to crash through. Let's go to the image menu at the top left. And from there I need to choose canvas size. I'm going to change the measurement value to percentage. Now in the width I'm going to put 20% and in the height 30% and when we click OK well we see an odd view on screen but if we hit Control 0 we can see the border has been made pretty well. We can make it thicker or thinner of course that's more personal. We're going to need a couple of new blank layers for this technique. Now we can create those down at the bottom right of the layers palette. So I'm going to click that icon once and then again. One of those I'm going to drag beneath the clouds because that's going to create the border. Moving over to the left of the screen down at the bottom of the toolbar to the color picker. I'm going to click the foreground color I'm going to change that to a neutral charcoal grey, something like that. There you can see it. I'm going to click OK. And what I'm going to do is use shortcut keys of Alt Backspace, which will flood the foreground colour. If you look to the right of each of these thumbnails, you can see that we can actually change the label by simply double clicking. It's not essential, but it's a useful thing to know. So let's turn our attention to creating that thin line the aircraft is going to break through. To do that, I'm going to hold the control key and just click the Skyscape thumbnail. And you can see that selection is made automatically for us. But I do need to select the thin line layer because that's where I want to put the pixels. Let's go to the edit menu, top left of the screen because we need the stroke command. There it is. We need a fairly strong line here. I'm going to make it something like 20 pixels. And this value will vary depending on how thick you want the line. But it also varies depending on the resolution of your image. This image is quite high resolution. So 20, and if I click the color panel and make that black, 20 pixels in black on the inside of that selection line should be about right. Let's click OK. And immediately if I hit Control D, there you can see the line we've just created. But everything we need is on individual layers. It's going to be essential, of course, for the line because we need to cut out a section of it to give the impression that the aircraft has forced its way through. Now we can turn our attention to cutting out the aircraft, so I'm going to select and turn on that layer. The subject we have here is bold and isolated against that sky, so selecting our subject here is going to be relatively easy. However, we can use our computer's power for this selection, or we can use Photoshop's cloud-based option. Now while those two options are going to make very little difference here because of the nature of the selection we need to make, it will do with more complex selections. 
here's how it works. I'm going to go to my preferences via edit, right down the bottom. The one I'm looking for is image processing. And here we can see select subject and remove background either on the device, that's our computer, which is going to be a few seconds quicker, or we can use the cloud. I'm going to click OK to the cloud. So with this cloud-based selection enabled, the select subject command, which is what we want next, sends the image data to Adobe's cloud servers for a more detailed analysis. So let's see just how it works here by going over to the toolbox. This is the option we require. It's grouped with the magic wand and the quick selection tool. But when I select it, we should see the little wheel going round here. If not, just give it a click. It's analyzed the image. And as you can see, as I move my cursor over the subject and I click, there's my selection made. So with that selection made, let's take a look a little bit closer. Let's go to the zoom on the left hand side. I just want to zoom in. And I think a quick look tells us we've got a pretty good selection there. What I would like to do is to just soften the edge of that selection. We do need to have one of the selection tools selected, but then we can see select and mask at the top of the screen, which I'll select. I'm going to view this in black and white. That's usually my chosen way to do this. Works for me 99 times out of 100, but all I really want is this feather command here. I'm going to highlight the value, overtype it with one pixel, and click OK. That's all I require. I'm going to hit Control 0 to fit the image on screen because what I need next is to apply a layer mask. I can do that down at the bottom left of the palette. And when I do that, it recognizes that I have a selection in place. And as you can see, it conveniently masks away that sky. Now we need to resize the aircraft. I'm not sure it actually requires that here, but we can resize it, rotate it and move it using the free transform tool. So I'm going to select the image that contains the aircraft. Go to my edit menu. Control T is the shortcut. There you can see it. So what I can do here is to rotate my aircraft, move it to the position I'd like to see it. And if I felt it needed to be reduced in size, I could do that too. In fact, I think it works pretty well at the size we have it. So I'm going to hit the tick on the options bar to commit that change. Now we need to create a gap in that thin line. So we need to select the appropriate layer. I'm going to go over to my selection tools. I'll just pick up the rectangular marquee, but you could use the polygonal or even the freehand. And I'm just going to cut out a section Hit Control X, which will remove it, as you can see, and Control V, which will paste it back onto the picture. It's pasted it back quite a way away from where we require it. Pick up your Move tool from the top of the toolbox, and we can put it back roughly in position. Now, at this point, it's going to take a little bit of time to cut that line up into sections and spread them around to give the impression that the aircraft has actually punched through the frame. So I think to save a little bit of time here, I'm going to open up my original image when I created this and we'll go through exactly what I did. There are some subtle differences, but not much. The first you'll notice is the background. I did add a gradient fill here just to give my background a little bit of variation. These changes are all going to be personal and creative to you. I did decide to add a little bit of Gaussian blur from the filter menu to the sky. It just makes the aircraft stand out and it looks a little more natural. I'm going to take you right to the top now to the aircraft because there's nothing different there. 
But I've got a couple of others here. First of all, I've got the original line, which we saw created right at the start of this video. But I've also got my fragments, and I've got my fragments locked up in a group. We can make a number of layers into a group, and the option for that is down at the bottom of the layers. Just select the layers and apply them to a group. If I It tidies up the layers, as you can see, because when I open them up, you can see how many different fragments I created there. So with them all locked in there, I cut up that line and placed them in positions I thought looked correct. But of course, when they're in a group, I can turn them all on or all off. If I zoom in, you can see I did add a little bit of blur to those as well to give them a feeling of authenticity. And what you'll also notice is this one here, this layer, creates just a little bit of a cloud spill. So it covers up that sharp line and just makes sure that the aircraft looks as though it's punched through that frame. This video is about 11 minutes long. Although I left out the time it took to cut up and position all of those line fragments, it's not taken us very long to create this image. Now, as you can see here, we could add other refinements if we wish. And as you can see here, I've just used a brush and white to create a vapor trail. Now, this is a technique that's not quite as innovative as it once was. So I try to make up for that by attention to detail with the image editing. Thanks for watching. Please like and share my video because I need your help to publicize my channel. But until then, see you next time.